In this video, we are going to create our IP endpoint class. First, let's create a new header file. We're going to call this IP endpoint. We're going to include our IP version header. For the things that we want to store in our IP endpoint class, we're going to want to store the IP version, the host name. We'll want to store the IP as a string. We will want to store the port assigned with this IP endpoint. And we will also want to store the bytes for this IP endpoint. For our IP version, we are actually going to add a new value for this enumerator called unknown. In that way, we can default this to unknown. When we are resolving the IP that is passed into the constructor, we will determine the IP version at that point. For the host name, we'll just default this to a blank string. Now for the constructor, we're going to take in a string for the IP, and then we are going to take in the port. We are also going to have just basic getter functions for our private members. Let's go ahead and first generate those since those will be pretty straightforward. These are just going to be returning our private members. So now let's take a look at our constructor, which is this is where all the magic's going to happen. First, we're going to set our port, since that won't change, just from whatever's passed in. The port is actually going to be used later on when we are establishing a connection and for things like that. So it's just being stored inside of this class, but it is not directly tied to the IP address that we will be resolving. Before we can start uh, with resolving the IP, we need to include the WES2 TCP IP header. And what this will allow us to do is we can now access a struct called inadder. And what this will be for is it stores an IPv4 internet address. If we look at the documentation, it's just a union. So it's either four unsigned chars, so those four bytes, or it's two shorts, or it's a long. But regardless, this is four bytes, it's just all unioned. When we call the IP endpoint constructor, for the first argument, we're passing in the IP as a string. So we might have something like this, or so on, maybe an external IP. I'm just making these numbers up. But let's say that we have uh, this what we're passing in. Well, this is considered to be in presentation format. We want to get it in network format so that we have the actual bytes for this IP address. And we're going to store that inside of this in adder struct. To do this, we need to call a function called inet p2n. And what this stands for is presentation format, which is what we have. And we're converting it to network format. The first argument is the address family. Now, we are currently only supporting Internet Protocol version 4 until we add in version 6 later on in this series. So when we attempt to parse an IPv4 address, we will pass in AFINet. The second argument is the pointer to the string that contains the presentation format. We'll pass in IP. And then the last argument is the pointer to where we want to store the address. Also, since we are using Internet Protocol version 4, we will be using an IN adder struct. If we were using version 6, we would use the IN adder 6 struct. When we look at the documentation for INET P to N, you will see that if no error occurs, the INET P to N function will return a value of 1. If an error occurs, we will get back either a 0 or negative 1, 0 being that they just entered an invalid uh, dotted decimal string, or negative 1 if something else occurs, where we can call get last error. All we're really concerned with here is if it was a success, because we have 
other ways of checking if the IP is valid if this if this way does not work. So we'll say if result is equal to one. Now if we want to access this IPv4 address, we have to go to our adder struct and then go to the union and then we can access the unsigned long with s adder. So first we're going to check that this was validly loaded because it should not be equal to in adder none. If it is in adder none, then something went wrong here. So once we get into here, we know that they must have entered in an IP address and not a host name. So because of this, we're going to set the host name to be equal to the IP. And in the IP endpoints where we actually have a host name, the host name will be different than the IP. But since we are not using a host name like, you know, google.com or something like that, then the host name is just going to be equal to the IP in this scenario. The IP string will of course be equal to the IP. We know the IP version will be version four. And the last thing that we have to determine is the IP bytes. Now, since it is a version four IP, we know that it is going to be four bytes. And we know that the bytes are stored in this unsigned long right here. So we can resize the bytes to be the size of an unsigned long. And then we can copy the bytes from where the address is stored into our vector of bytes. We're going to do that using memcopy. You should be familiar with memcopy, but if you're not, the first argument is the destination for where we want to copy the bytes. We want to copy them at the very beginning of our IP bytes vector. So we will do the address of the first element in that array. The next argument is the source. So where is the data coming from? And we want to do the address of where that is stored, where that IP address is stored as an unsigned long. And then the last argument is the size, the number of bytes that we're copying. And we know that will be the size of a U long, which is four bytes. At this point, we are done determining um, our IP endpoint information, so we will return out of here. Later on, we will go about resolving host names, and then if, it, if the host name for IPv4 is not found, then we will do uh, attempt to resolve the IPv6 address and the IPv6 host name. Now that this is set up, let's go into our socket header and include our IP endpoint header, because later on the socket will need to be able to access this anyways. And Back in our source CPP, let's test this after we initialize Winsock and see if what we're getting makes sense. So we'll do IP endpoint, let's call it test. And the first argument is the address. So let's say we just put in uh, 192.168.0.2. Then the port doesn't matter. Let's put in anything. What we'll do is if test dot get IP version if we if we know it's an IPv4 address which it should be because that's all that we're currently supporting then we'll do our stuff otherwise this is not an IPv4 address what we'll do is we will do hostname IP port and then we will print out the IP bytes. So if we set the server as our startup project, and we test this out, see we get, this is not an IPv4 address. Oh, oops, the reason that that happened is back in the IP endpoint, I put equals equals here, I should have put not equals. We don't want it to be an adder. Not. Let's give that another test. All right, and we get the host name, IP port, and then the IP bytes. Alternatively, if we put in, you know, dot two five seven, that wouldn't be valid. When we tested this, we should get, yeah, this is not an IPv4 address. In the next video, we are going to look at resolving host names. So instead of putting in 192.168.0.2, 
an IP address directly like this, we could put in something like google.com and it would find the IP address for us to use.